What's up guys, Dignity here, and today I'm bringing you the long-awaited crafting tutorial. I'm going to show you guys how to craft from start to finish, top up, how to craft, why to craft, when to craft, and hopefully you guys can take away uh, some very valuable knowledge from this video, ranging from how to start ground up crafting maybe for your build, and all the way into crafting for profit. So today I'm going to take a look at three individual things that I would like to craft. The first being an ambusher, the second being a harbinger bow, and the third being a valax. Now the reason that I chose these is because the ambusher is the T1 base right now for daggers. The poignard is pretty close as well, so there is some incentive to be crafting on that. But at the same time, um, ambusher is very balanced as far as the base DPS, the, t the crit, and the attack speed. So it's quite easy to make a very good dagger out of an ambusher, whether it's a spellcaster dagger, a cast on crit dagger, or a physical base dam uh, damage dagger, or even an elemental base damage dagger. So all of those are the variations that can come out of an ambusher. Uh, the Harbinger Bow, however, is pretty much a pure Fizz option. Um, Elemental Split Arrow is a build that's in the, the meta right now, but most likely if you're going Elemental, then you're probably going to be looking at Magic Finding with a Wind Ripper, because Wind Ripper, even with the nerf, is still one of the top tier Ellie Bows. A very good Elemental Bow could potentially come out of a Harbinger or a Thicket. However, I feel like most bows being crafted right now off a harbinger base are going to be pushed in the physical direction. And lastly, um, the Val Axe is probably the T1 two-hand axe base. Cyclone is one of the current top tier meta builds. Very, very efficient at staying alive as well as doing damage and requires, in general, a decent two-hander. So your options are at Xeri's Disfavor, which is a 600 plus potentially DPS um, two-hand axe but it's around 25 to 30 exalt maybe a little more maybe a little less depending on where you're at in softcore and probably more in hardcore uh, or tempest uh, etc so crafting around a 500 to 600 dps valax is not the most challenging thing in the world it takes a little bit of luck um, however, I don't see a lot of elemental axes coming off, even though you can get pretty high aggregate damage between the elemental and the physical damage from a Val Axe. It's generally not the reason you would craft it. So, the last thing that I haven't covered and I don't think I'll do too much crafting on is a wand. I have some eye level 83 imbued wands here. Uh, the problem is... Wands are extremely difficult to craft, I would say arguably the hardest thing to craft, neck and neck with a dagger. Um, this is because they draw from both the elemental pool, the spell pool, and the physical pool for mods, right? So if you're looking at a Harbinger or you're looking at a Valax, they, they only draw from the elemental pool and the physical damage pool. So you have like your plus to bow gems or your plus to melee skills and your plus one to all gems but you're not rolling things like you know uh, lightning damage to spells crit strike for spells spell damage on the axe and the bow because of this mod exclusion um, that makes these relatively easier to craft however you could spend one alt and make the most amazing weapon come out of the AUG and Regal from that point forward, and you can spend a thousand alts and get nothing. Um, so I've bought about 900 alts. Don't know exactly how much of these we'll use throughout the tutorial, but I do want to go ahead and basically explain as I craft what I'm crafting for, why I'm crafting for it, and what to do during the crafting process and your options for finishing the crafting process. So this may help you if you are in a new league and don't have access to a ton of currency and need to maybe make yourself a dagger or a bow to get started because there are none available to you. Um, it may help you early in the league as well if you are crafting for profit. Generally the first week or two, multi-mod is not an option. They've nerfed whatever ma like master exploit or like pattern that was used in order to get like Elrion level 8 within the first 48 hours. That's I guess out of the game. I didn't even know what it was, but I think it had something to do with the archives slash the, the library. So because of that, 
people are taking a little bit longer to get Elrion level eight. So it may be, you know, three to four or five days. It may be even more before you see somebody who has dedicated their initial play to masters um, in order for you to be able to complete the crafting. And again, this also is a trustworthy person. So with that in mind, your ladder league strategies for crafting are relatively sound as far as multi-mod is concerned and access to um you know cannot roll attack mods cannot roll caster mods blocking prefixes and suffixes and that's much later that you would get into that it's a little bit more expensive as well um, however for the purposes of just this video um i would like to give a um kind of overall perspective on the process of crafting through these three weapon types so that you know what to expect when you get involved in crafting on any base. So let's go ahead and get started now. You could scour out, but I generally would suggest scour outking on gear and not weapons. So gloves, boots, helmets, chests are general scour out candidates, especially early in the league, and rings and jewelry, rings and necklaces as well can be uh, really good scour out candidates, especially if they're high item level. You could also chaos spam gear and come out very, very well with a good roll of mods. If it rolls life and two resistances, then it may be max movement speed or high movement speed on boots, you've got a winner. Whereas when you're crafting a weapon, you want much more control over the mods that you put on them because multi-modding is such an important factor in the meta of crafting. So because of this, you want to control your prefixes and control your suffixes as best as possible, leaving you flexibility to continue the process of crafting and then complete the process of crafting depending on how your uh, craft is going. So I'm going to transmute all of my weapons, uh, one or two of them here. Uh, have not already been transmuted and then we're going to go ahead and start on the dagger first so the dagger an ambusher base what i'm using uh, initially here can roll one of two ways it can roll well one of four ways really it can roll caster it can roll cast on crit it can roll physical and it can roll elemental now a caster dagger is going to have things like lightning damage to spells or elemental damage to spells more aptly critical strike for spells it's going to have spell damage it's going to have crit and possibly crit multi so something might have like you know over 100 damage uh, over 100 spell damage over 100 crit strike for spells it might have critical strike it might have crit multi and then it might have flat elemental damage to a spell that would be one instance if not it might even have an open prefix for leech with those stats that would be a dagger a caster would want for cast on crit specifically the two main stats or three main stats you're looking for is spell damage critical strike chance and attack speed generally cast on crits with dagger base builds are going to be focused on procs per second which comes from attacks per second which comes from the attack speed of the weapon they want a high base crit to scale whatever source they're using maybe cyclone maybe spectral throw they're going to want the high base crit so that it's easier to scale the actual crit of the skill itself through the base crit of the weapon and then you're going to want high spell damage because the physical damage is not a factor you're actually trying to crit as much as possible in order to proc whatever spells are linked to cast on crit and cast on crit can only link spells so you may be able to afford to give one suffix up for cast on crit like if you if you manage to not need a multi mod you could have a like a gg cast on crit dagger with spell damage um and then your su like suffixes being crit attack speed and critical strike for spells or crit multiplier so one of those two things daggers can also roll physical elemental so by physical i mean high fizz damage high um, crit high attack speed f rolling the dagger into a very high physical base dps you would aim for 280 to 300 plus as a minimum elemental is stacking a significant amount of fire cold and lightning damage with both attack speed and crit the possibility of crit multiplier and these would be things for like elemental spectral throw and other builds based around having a high elemental based weapon so i'm going to go ahead and craft a little bit and as i hit some of these mods that we're sitting here uh, looking through i was going to uh want to give you some explanation of when to hit 
when to stay, when to fold, and when to continue um, the crafting process. So we're just going to hit here. Like The general rule is that if you can master on more of whatever affix you get with the master, you probably want to roll over it. And that's because if you know we get this physical damage roll here, I could maybe aug this and get an awesome attack speed roll, but the problem is I could have a higher uh, flat mastered onto this, and that would make the attack speed and subsequent hopefully physical damage much more effective, and it would generate a higher DPS weapon than this polished roll could do. Um, so you're generally looking for, um, like here is a great example, okay? This is a T1 attack speed roll, celebration, and a very low tier flat roll. Now honed is, I think, a little bit less than what you could get from the master. Um, 13 to 17, so 7 to 15. So it's just a slight bit less than what we could get from the master. It's a t basically, there's a two tier master roll here. And as you can see, we've already got a mod of this type. Here's the first tier, here's the second tier. So Honed falls in this first tier, and this is going to be a little bit higher roll. So because of that, this dagger is pretty much capped at how good it could potentially be from this point forward. Now if you've got tons of regals, and you want to just potentially want to regal a tyrannical, or an emperor's, or a dictator's, or a merciless on here and just pray, then you could just waste your regal and scour it afterwards. However, if you're trying to conserve currency and craft for profit, even though this looks like potentially a very nice roll, this is something that you want to roll over. Even if you were to, let's say, regal this and you got the hybrid roll, hybrid like emperors or better, and then you mastered on like a fizz damage roll, um, like the you know 79% fizz roll from the master, and Maybe you even multi-modded it and you got crit as well, giving it the best possible outcome. You're probably not going to come like above 450, I'm sorry, above 250 DPS, which is going to make this less valuable than the master mod cost that you put into it. So we'll keep rolling here for a little bit and just see if we can't come across some good opportunities for me to explain some of the situations that you can get into while you're crafting here and how to uh, how to handle them and and how to assess them so a lot of these accuracy roles accuracy is not a bad affix to have generally most builds rely on some amount of accuracy however accuracy is not the stat that you want to be slotting in one of your three suffix slots on a weapon now if you get a hybrid physical damage and accuracy roll of course you can't that that accuracy roll has no impact on your three suffixes it comes with the hybrid roll and that is absolutely fine it is expected um, however you have room for accuracy on your gloves on your helmet, on your rings, and on your necklaces as well. So because accuracy can roll in all of these other spots, it is more advantageous to get the accuracy there instead of having it on your weapon. Now here we've hit a T1 celebration roll, which is T1 attack speed. Because we've hit a T1 roll, it's, I mean, it's one of the good ones, T1 um, attack speed, crit multiplier, crit, um, are, are all really good suffixes and for a dagger that could extend to critical strike for spells as well. You want to aug on this. Now because this is more attack speed, the master can give at most 15%, even if you rolled like a 20 to 20, 27% anywhere in there, maybe even as low as 18, because it's more than the master, it's worth spending at least the aug on. So we're going to aug it and pray. All right. So we got lightning damage for spells. Now this is a con, like a conflicted dagger, right? Because somebody who is um, maybe cast on crit based, if it regaled crit or something like that, could maybe benefit from the lightning damage to spells. And you know, if they regaled crit or if they regaled maybe spell damage, then you could master on whichever one you didn't get. This could potentially like go to somebody for a little bit of currency, but this isn't worth the regal, even though we hit electrocuting, which is a very high tier. If it's not tier one, it's tier two. On the uh, on the lightning damage to spells. So we'll just continue to, to roll over things like that, even though those look like good rolls and in some like really rare case could potentially yield a good roll if you regaled it well, you're banking on a regal hitting that is extremely, extremely hard to do. Um, not impossible. 
which is very very difficult to do so here we go it's not a it's not a t1 it's a t2 attack speed but because it's more than the master we want to regal it the lightning damage is quite low now here we go we've hit a flaring okay now unfortunately this roll with an intelligence as the suffix but that's okay because we could still potentially regal this because flaring is such a high dps increase at its base just that flat is so good if we were to regal a very high or even a mediocre fizz mod this could potentially or like a t1 attack speed t2 attack speed this could potentially end up being a decent situation for the dagger to be in as long as we can craft about 280 to 300 dps we've spent right now you know maybe maybe 60 alts total maybe uh, right around you know 55 to 60 alts and we've hit our first flaring which is a t1 roll if this had not rolled with a suffix, it would be even better. Unfortunately, the intelligence roll is already there and there's nothing we can do about it, but we're gonna go ahead and regal it. Now we hit maximum mana. Okay, this dagger is rip, unfortunately, and that is a terrible regal. So the process from here, even though we hit the T1 roll, one of the ones flaring, flaring, incision, tyrannical, merciless, emperors, dictators, and glyphic, all of those, are, are mods that we are after and again these are all item level 83 bases which i probably should have covered in the very beginning um, but item level 83 bases are what you need now to roll the top tier mods for all mods so flaring is still 77 but merciless and dictators are both 83 and glyphic is still 79 so for a dagger which can roll spell damage you want at least 79 or 83 so unfortunately, ripped the flaring. It was uh, it was nice while it lasted, uh, but we'll go ahead and that was a pretty early pop. So hopefully we can get something like tyrannical or merciless on this guy and um, show off something quite nice. Now that was a pretty decent elemental roll, but I'm not very interested in crafting an elemental dagger in this meta. So I'm just gonna go ahead and roll over and continue looking for something better. All right, incision, okay. Now we've hit a T1 suffix, and it's one of the T1 suffixes that we like, incision. Um, this is one of the important core ones for just about anything. Any, anything crit is probably going to be okay. Incision is um, about 10% more, or 10, uh, yeah, 10% more crit than you can master on. So Vagan will give you a 27% crit roll in here somewhere. Yeah, 22 to 27% crit. So that's why incision is very important. Now, because it's a suffix and it's not a prefix, we will always aug. Um, the suffixes are pretty relatively easy to hit. And because you need as many prefixes, flaring, um, emperors, uh, dictators, merciless, tyrannical, you need as much possible prefix action as you can get to help make the dagger or whatever craft it is good um, because they've taken away the ability for us to master mod a hybrid mod right so at most we could potentially master on the fizz mod and let's see if i can show you guys in here um, we could potentially master on this fizz here flat it's kind of a mid-tier fizz roll and we could also master on this guy okay so if we were to multi-mod it at best we could put on just that much damage which is honestly not that much so you need the help of the of the uh, prefix before you would potentially be in the situation to regal now we didn't get the prefix that we wanted we didn't even get close so we have to continue to roll over another um celebration fortunately roll with mana leech that was a nice elemental roll probably something that we could have augged um but not very interested again in, in rolling an elemental dagger at this time now piercing is the bottom roll of a mastered roll so it's equivalent and we just hit flaring of piercing, just like casually augging this on here. All right, so this is definitely worth a regal. Um, it would have been nice to have like augged this onto, um, say, an incision roll, but that this is the reason why you want to 
aug the suffixes and leave the prefixes. So we got the help of the prefix that we were after. This is like the best possible uh, case scenario. And now it's gone from just being a master average um, critical strike roll into something that we could potentially regal for hopefully profit. And we'll see. Now crit strike multiplier on this is kind of unfortunate. Now this is like the skeleton of a potentially good dagger, but the problem is the only thing that's T1 on here is the flaring. Everything else is low tier. If we were to multi-mod this, that would take up one of our suffixes, and the last suffix that we need to make this a good dagger is the attack speed. That would be what shifts this into an average mediocre couple hundred DPS into the 280-300 range should we have had the attack speed either be regaled on or we'd rolled the hybrid or the fizz mod instead and then we would have been able to master or multi-mod this into a really nice dagger. Unfortunately, this dagger's pretty rip. Even though, it, I mean, this came that close to being an exceptional dagger and potentially of able for us to craft further. Um, but looking at it like this, is, is heartbreaking because that came so close. Like we almost did it, that, that casual aug of a flaring. Um, but that's just not quite enough to turn this into a decent dagger. So bye bye, rip, <laughs> rip. And we'll keep going a little farther. Um, now the unmaking is actually quite nice. This, this suffix could be potentially turned into a decent dagger. Unfortunately, it rolled flat fire damage, which does not affect spells, and spell critical strike chance, which does affect spells. So a little bit of confusion there. We didn't quite get what we were after. Um, but, you know, we'll keep going for a little bit more and see if we get anything decent. Now, mana regeneration falls under the same category as accuracy. Yes, mana regen is a good stat. No argument there. The problem is you do not want to itemize mana regeneration on your weapon. There is plenty of other stats, um, slots for mana regeneration from your shield to your jewelry, etc, etc. So you don't really want to, like you can even get it on a Cloak of Defiance, for example. Um, and you really don't want to itemize it here. So even if you get something that's amazing, you know, 50, 60 mana region on your weapon, it's not going to be as beneficial to you as having a damage dealing affix in that spot. Or at least something, an affix contributing to your damage. Annealed is just a touch higher than the master, but it rolled with a pretty ugly attack speed. So overpowering is the new elemental weapon damage top tier it used to be unleashed now it's overpowering and this is like again potentially really nice but unfortunately it's not what you're wanting to itemize on your weapon unless you already have crit attack speed and two really good flat rolls that could be accented by an elemental damage with weapons roll most people prefer three flat elemental damages however the 40 percent weapon elemental damage may be more damage for some builds in some cases than having the three flat it's completely going to be dependent on how you're gearing what your passives look like which auras you look like so again i'm not interested in crafting this dagger any further because it rolled accuracy and wed but it could have been you know potentially nice for a build in like a previous meta of the game so wicked is and wicked and serrated are probably a couple of my least favorite affixes to roll. They generally roll with like a low attack, like accuracy um, mod as well, making you like initially think you hit a really high hybrid. And wicked is in the same vein that you can master. The highest you can master is 79 to 77. So this is not even worth augging because you, if it was a hybrid roll, then it would be worth regaling. But it's not. It's just a flat fizz mod, so it's quite low. Mm. Gleaming is pretty much the master tier role. I mean, we could aug it for, for fun, but not going to pull much out of it, unfortunately. Squires is a very low hybrid role. 
So we got crit and mana there. Um, penetrating is a little bit low. Uh, you'd really like to aim for the incision, but it's acceptable. Now, this is actually a pretty decent start to an elemental dagger. Um, if you were to regal on crit or another high elemental damage roll, um, this could be really, really nice. We'll go ahead and regal it. Unfortunately, we got hybrid spell damage and mana, uh, which is pretty rip. Like, that's that's pretty dumpster. Um, so we'll do, we'll hit this again. Ah, cruel. Now, if this cruel had rolled without the mana region roll, I would probably consider regaling it because cruel is really, really, really nice fizz mod. Um, I regaled a cruel dagger at the beginning of this league that regaled on a mercenaries roll. It totaled out to be 198% physical mod. I'm, and that's all. So it was just cruel, 154% cruel. I regaled on 44% um, like hybrid mod. And then I multi modded it, put on flat, put on crit, put on attack speed. It was 306 PDPS. And the first person who whispered me bought it for 20x. And that was, again, the very beginning of the league. So I had to wait over a week and a half before somebody that I trusted had Elrion level 8. But this is probably just because of how high Cruel can roll. If it rolls by itself or with one decent suffix like a half crit or a half like a master tier crit roll or master tier uh, attack speed roll then cruel is most likely going to be worth uh, regaling every time we're going to roll over it and we're going to probably regal this guy one more time and then we'll move on to uh to talking about the bow and the axe mm, mercenary is unfortunate Although we've actually hit some, uh, we've hit some pretty decent rolls on here already. So this dagger is definitely popping right now. It would have been nice to be able to craft this into something start to finish. So maybe the bow or the axe might be, here's another incision, nice. Fortunately, you got life leech, just a little bit rip. <clears throat> but maybe the axe or the bow or even this last hit, once we get it on here, will be something that we can complete the process on. Now, occultist is a pretty nice spell damage roll. Unfortunately, you roll with a dex roll. But Occultus could be something you could consider if it rolls with an attack speed or crit roll. You can consider regaling on Occultus. It's about 50 uh, spell damage plus. A Wicked again, quite a low uh, Fizz mod. Okay, so Occultus of Calamity. This is the start of a very interesting dagger. I think this will be the one that we regal on. It's quite low, and I don't even think that it's really worth the regal, but just on the off chance that we were to hit something really, really good, now I'm gonna hit it. All right, lightning damage, that's pretty rip. <laughs> and that's, that's pretty rip. Uh, so we'll set this guy aside for just a bit, and we'll start focusing on the bow here. Now we've already, uh, I rolled it to Bloodthirsty at the, I think the end of a stream, um, and then left it, so, Hopefully we hit something nice on here. Tempered of Ease. Now, Tempered is one tier below Flaring. Ease is not the highest of attack speed rolls. However, if this were to regal something like really, really good, you could potentially mod this into a half-decent bow. I have some bows up here that I think are close. Uh, I think I may have sold it. Unfortunate, but it was a tempered bow that had the nice master mod of j it rolled attack speed 13% It had the master mod fizz damage on it, and it was 294 um, So worth selling basically was the point As much as we could regal this I think we'll, we'll roll over it for now if we hit another uh, situation like that then yeah, so this is another good serrated is a flat fizz mod or a fizz, flat fizz percentage, it's not hybrid, and it rolled with an attack accuracy rating, making you think, all right, at first glance, there might be a hybrid roll sitting there. Unfortunately, it's just a dumpster serrated roll, trolling as always. So for bows, you're looking for, um, at this point, flat physical damage, fizz mod, attack speed, crit, and hybrid fizz mod. 
And those are really your main options. Elemental rolls are really, really weak in this meta, except for like maybe elemental split arrow. And again, if you're going for something like that, you are probably going to be looking at a thicket bow base, as well as potentially just rolling with a wind ripper. So we will uh, hit this quite a bit and we will see what we come up with. A crit strike multi, yeah, you know. It's worth maybe the AUG just on the off chance we got something good. And again, for the incision there, we got a, a weak incision now. Renown is a T1 attack speed roll, so that's quite nice. Uh, shocking is T2, I believe, if not T3. So if this is like a thicket bow, it's probably pretty decent. But, um, or a decent start at least. Maybe worth regaling on a thicket. There's electrocuting. Here we go. A nice incision roll. And a gleaming. Now gleaming is just a touch, like a touch more than what the master is going to give you. Is not really worth it. It's like, it's like right at a master tier roll. So this is not really worth the regal. Now tempered of piercing. Let's go ahead and give this a try. If it regals a really nice fizz roll or regals even a decent attack speed roll, then this could be modded into an okay bow. So let's see what we get. 55 dexterity is is not is not what we were after um so yeah <laughs> we'll keep going now it is very common and maybe if we get a um we'll log on that if we get a very strong prefix only roll um, it is possible to block a common suffix with the master all right, so let's say we got just the flaring, or just the tyrannical, or just the merciless, or just the dictators. Then we would be able to put on something like dexterity that would force it when it regals to exclude dexterity from the regal pool. So yeah, you can see we rolled, there we go, dexterity quite often. So because it has the mod, if you look over here, because it has the mod, you cannot have another one put on there. But you could, for example, put a prefix on. So you can use that to block this from regaling a very common prefix or suffix, like dexterity, again. I ripped the incision there, unfortunately. Honed is quite a low flat roll. Reavers is, cool, is like a half hybrid rolls. Maybe worth the AUG. Didn't really get anything off of it. There we go. Some destruction. Tempered of destruction. Now here's the problem with crit multi. Okay. Most people prefer to have attack speed and critical strike chance over crit multi until the bow is like 350 to 400 DPS. Then they might consider the itemization of crit multi. Now the problem here is, when you look at multi-modding, which is where this bow would have to go from here, when you look at multi-modding, you've already spent a suffix on crit multiplier, which is generally the suffix that you will give up in order to multi-mod an item, or a bow in this case. So I would give up the crit multiplier roll, give because item can have multiple mods, is a suffix. That would leave me, let's just say, this roll just tempered, and I regaled an insane hybrid. Then I could forego crit multiplier, master on crit, attack speed, and the last physical mod. And that would allow me to have a very high physical damage bow that retained crit, that excluded the crit multi. But unfortunately, the crit multi has already rolled. So this means if I wanted to multi-mod this bow, I have to give up crit or I have to give up attack speed. And both of those greatly like impact the DPS of the bow. So we're going to regal it for the sake of being here with all these regals. Um, but you regal it knowing that you're kind of pigeonholed at this point. Now I rolled a bunk stuff or bunk prefix, so we don't even have to worry about it. Um, but yeah, oh, good lord. But know that when you see the crit multi roll on there, that you've rolled the roll that you would like to forego in order to complete the multi mod process. If you intend to multi mod the bow, other than that, you have to like YOLO it. You know what I mean? And that's that gets a little bit sketchy, where you could easily waste a lot of money and not hit anything.
Now this would have been really nice. This is a T1, T1 roll. Unfortunately, it's just, it's not, it's not where the meta is shifting. Builds aren't built around bows that have these affixes. So this is pretty useless. Even if it regaled amazing, it would still have, it would still have given one prefix up to the elemental roll. Hmm. Champions is pretty decent, but again, we've got champions, which is a above average hybrid roll, and we've got rage, which is crit multiplier. So knowing that, let's just say we regaled on a really good fizz mod or a really good flat fizz, then we would have to forego an attack speed roll or a crit roll in order to complete the crafting process of the bow through multi mod. Penetrator. So hopefully we at least come out with something good. Again, gleaming is meh. Annealed is a bit above average. Mm. If you have a ton of regals late in the game, or late in the league, or just sitting around in standard, this might be a bow that you would regal. On the off chance that it may get good, um, but unlikely that that you would hit it, so I would roll over it. Sorry for the yawns. Not hitting a whole lot, sadly. Flaring of penetrating. All you have to do is complain just a little bit. Just complain a tiny little bit and you will get what you're after. Now here's like pretty much like the best possible case. The only thing that would be a little bit better is if we had hit incision instead of penetrating. But this is the start of a great bow. You've got room for if you roll a great prefix then you have room to put on the last prefix as well as the attack speed roll through multi-mod combined. You don't have room for crit multiplier and you haven't already rolled it so you have the option still of foregoing it but this is pretty much like the best possible like scenario for um, the bow to be in except maybe you know the incision roll instead of the penetrating. So we're gonna regal this we're gonna pray. <sighs> Damn it. <laughs> rip <laughs> rip uh, rip damn man Ugh. all right let's move on to the <laughs> I'm, I'm i'm sad let's let's move on to the valax maybe we'll hit something here now wicked valax of accuracy this makes you initially look at it and go oh man i may have just hit a great hybrid unfortunately you didn't So here we're looking for on an axe, pretty much the same rolls that we're looking for on the bow. High fizz damage, high flat fizz, high attack speed, and then potentially crit. However, it is really important to note that the base crit is very low of a Valax. If you are looking to uh, roll crit, then you need to be looking at, uh, for axes, you need to be looking at a flesh ripper. Because the uh, base crit is much higher due to the implicit. Right, so you've got a 7% base crit right here with absolutely no critical strike roll on it. And I don't have one with crit on it, but we can maybe roll on this guy just to do one crit and one non crit. Let's scour this guy here. Hmm. Headed in the right direction already. Alright, so really we're just looking for a very, very high uh, attack speed roll, very, very high flat rolls very very high fizz mod now vicious is getting there acclaim is higher than we can get from the master but glinting is oh my gosh glinting again yeah yuck gross so you're looking for you know merciless tyrannical dictators emperors flaring tempered even and then celebration maybe some infamy and you'll become very familiar with these affixes the more that you craft. Mm. 
not really hitting much, unfortunately. Let's swap over to the uh, Flash Ripper for a bit. Now that's not too terrible. So look at the difference, right? Uh, so if I can just roll like a quick incision on here. Perfect, all right, penetrating and incision. All right, so these are very, very close together. Um, within a couple percent point, uh, you know, three percent off, right? Except this base crit is 8.8, .8 and this base crit is very low. Um, however, like, uh, if you look, the 25% physical damage, um, like, if I can maybe just aug something. Okay, unfortunate. But the the base damage uh, is a little bit lower, I think, on the flesh ripper at its core, right? Let's get rid of that. All right, now it's 20 quality. Yep. Okay, hold on. Well, we'll have to we'll have to deal with this one first. All right, so I'm probably just gonna regal this one for giggles. Oh wow, we actually regaled fizz percentage. We just regaled a really fucking low one. That could have been our winner, boys. If that had rolled like instead of 70, had rolled like 170, we would have just like won the game. We could have just multi modded on attack speed and flat and we would have been fine if we were sitting at like 194 um fizz damage the problem is we're only sitting at 94 um so that's a glorious failure right there unfortunately wow i don't have any other comparable ones but that really sucks <laughs> that really like that came that rolled the fizz mod it just didn't roll enough of it so unfortunately that guy's that guy's rip. Uh, even if you put attack speed on that and flat, it's not going to be that great. But if you look here, this is really what I wanted to show you, is that the low end is about the same. They're one damage off on the low end, but this guy has six more damage on the high end. So that's really, really important. So. Mercenaries uh, with dex. Serrated. Ugh. And again, we're not really looking for rolling crit on this axe, but you know, if we get it, we get it. But rolling something like flaring, tyrannical, emperors, dictators, merciless on either of these two guys is a massive, massive, massive damage increase. Just insane amount of damage can come from rolling a really, really high fizz based roll on here. And the attack speed really carries it. The fizz does most of the work, but the attack speed helps tremendously. Now there we go. That's the start of a decent one. Oh my good lord! Uh. <laughs> we just did it twice in a row and the rolls are so low. Uh, all right, well, let's go ahead and just do this. So from here to complete this process, we'd add on the flat. That's a decent flat roll, but ah, oh, man, it could have been so good. It could have been so good. Ah, oh, God, it could have been really good, guys. It could have been so nice. Unfortunately, it's not. I'm gonna take a quick second here. I'm gonna check the uh, DPS of it. All right, so that guy is at 426 DPS with just what we did right there. <sighs> Man. Could have, could have come out really, really nicely. Um, again, if we were at like 207%, then we would be looking at, you know, a six to 700 DPS X, somewhere in there. If it had rolled the flaring on here, uh, we'd probably be looking at a 550-ish DPS axe. However, we came up short. But about 450 to 500 is where these axes start to get valuable. And this hit like just on the bottom end of that. So I could probably set this aside and make back about, you know, 15, 20 chaos. Maybe in the beginning of the league, I could make as much as an exalt or two. Like if I rolled this on like day three to day five, where, where there's no axes really out there. But by now the market is so saturated that I probably would have a rough time trying to even sell this guy. Um, I just put the master on there just to show, but let's go ahead and try to roll a crit one now. I'm feeling pretty good. Our regals have been like right on point. The problem is they just haven't uh, 
they haven't hit enough they've hit they've hit the right mods just not hitting enough of them so that's pretty insane that we just we just regal fizz mod onto fizz mod twice in a row but like again you know we didn't even get above a bloodthirsty roll there and maybe you could define that a little bit higher but it's not really worth it Now the reason that you don't want elemental rolls is because most people who are going to be using these in any of their builds are going to be using it for the physical damage scaling they've picked in their build. So if you look through, you know, clusters like cleaving, physical damage with axes, down here in the bottom, um, you know, physical damage with two-handed melee weapons, they might come out the melee physical damage nodes down here, they might pick up two-handed melee physical damage here, etc, etc. So everything is going to be physical damage with axes, now yeah, okay, you know, that, that could be one-handed, but again, for the most part, you're going to be looking at two-handed melee weapons, axes here, again, this could be one-handed as well, um, but again, a lot of the physical damage is going to come through scaling physical damage. Not in, like very little to any of this has been elemental damage with weapons. And so because of that, fizz is, fizz is the preferred itemization and passive investment. And that's also why you need it on the weapon to, to utilize that and scale it higher. So people using uh, Cyclone and Ice Crash and builds like of the like are uh, spin to wins are going to be oh baby Whew. come on man let's just let's just regal let's be friends let's just regal let's just regal hybrid mod we've been regaling hybrid the whole entire time let's just regal a hybrid mod on this guy or a huge attack speed mod and let's just let's just call it a day man let's just wrap it up with that. All right, so I'm just gonna take a quick peek at this guy's DPS, which is probably more than um, yeah, 363. Probably going to benefit the most from putting on this guy here. I'm gonna go ahead and look at it again. Probably not gonna be much higher. 433. Um, so here we have two Fizz mods, a hybrid and a flat Fizz mod with attack speed getting it to 428, and this guy, no attack speed. If I were to multi-mod this though, I could put on multi-mod, attack speed, and flat, and probably push the DPS to um, about 500 to 515. Unfortunately, I have zero interest in doing that because I could only get about my multi-mod cost back out of it. So this one could have been one that went to multi-mod status, if it rolled like anything other than yeah, if it rolled a good suffix like crit or it rolled well crit crit would have excluded the attack speed roll so maybe um, we're limited here to only rolling a good flat roll or a good fizz hybrid roll but if we'd have regaled that um, this could have been something we could easily crafted into a multiple exalt weapon and unfortunately multi modding it at this point would just barely get us our dp or our, our investment back so this is a really good example of when not to multi mod but we know the dps as it is you know add on a 15 percent attack speed roll that's going to put it somewhere around the 500 to 515 mark and because of that we could realistically expect, you know, maybe two to three X, and it's going to cost us at least two exalts to multi mod. That under consideration, this one just kind of goes in the bin. You know what I mean? These guys just go back and you craft on them later. Uh, but we do have some uh, some alts left, so we'll go ahead and spend the rest of them on the dagger. Maybe, just maybe, we'll end up with a nice. Hey, you guys are conquerors. We'll go ahead and regal this. Um, now I rolled Conquerors with a pretty low Fizz mod. The way that you would finish this dagger would be to um, multi-mod on, 
a fizz mod uh, that's up to 79%, making this about 140, and then an attack speed roll that could be at most 15%. Um, so I don't think this dagger would quite break 275 DPS. Um, it would come pretty close, um, but I don't think you would make anywhere near your multi-modding cost back. But that was pretty good. That was pretty good. If that would have rolled a higher uh, flat roll on there, then that probably would have been worth uh, finishing the crafting process as well. Like we were, we're coming very, very close to hitting stuff that's quite usable and quite valuable. Um, we just didn't hit any of it yet, sadly. So let's see, man. We're down here to our last couple stacks of alts. Let's see if we pull out a winner real fast. If not, yeah, you know. A rip is a rip. No uh, stranger to blowing currency here in the stream. Getting tons and tons of low rolls. This is an unmaking. Uh, just not high enough. Uh, fire for spells there to really want to consider doing anything else with it. That's about the same as master attack speed. Oh baby, I can feel it. I can feel it. We need like 150 <laughs> uh, fizz mod, not just 50. All right. Well, it's pretty much going to wrap up unless we hit something here at the dinner bell. I think this goose be cooked. Oh, I believe in us. I believe two more. All right. Well, actually, we got, let's go. We got a few more. Uh, we got a few more. We'll, we'll we'll tap into our emergency reserves. We'll hit something else good on this. I I feel like we should at least try to go for bro. Try to pull out something good, worth writing home about. Hmm. All right, a kneel to celebration is actually quite decent, but uh, one to three cold is pretty bad. <laughs> so, it was close. It would be nice to uh, if you get like a um, a merciless on this dagger with like a even a half decent attack even if you just get merciless you can multi mod merciless into like a 300 dps dagger no problem so with that in mind you don't even have to hit something amazing um you can hit any suffix and multi mod from there man bloodthirsty mana regen oh you can just literally hit anything multi mod it and the merciless will be such a huge damage increase I and mean, it'll carry the DPS of the weapon with a master modded flat all the way up to, um, and like a master mod attack speed, master modded flat up to 300 DPS. Now you may not have crit, but you will have a very, very high fizz DPS dagger with decent enough base crit that it's m most certainly sellable for more than the multi mod price. All right, I believe in us, man. I, I believe in us. Hmm. Interesting combo there, but not what I'm looking to roll. Alright, we got uh, 120 more. We're going to blow them. So hopefully this guide has helped you and you understand more of the process of crafting, how to control your um, affixes, and what to be looking for when you're crafting certain base types. If you have any questions, uh, you can feel free to leave them in the comment section below. I'd be happy to answer them um, as they pop up. And if you're interested, you're always welcome to catch us live at Twitch TV backslash Dignity. We are constantly blowing currency, constantly uh, releasing new content for the YouTube as far as how to make money, how to progress in the game from normal Ziri to maps to Uber Ziri, progression in a new league, how to craft for no money, how to spend money like this and craft at the same time. And just general game knowledge, if you're interested in learning more, um, becoming a better player, or just having a good time with us, uh, feel free to check us out. Again, that's Twitch TV backslash Dignity. Um, if you did like this guide and did help you, please feel free uh, to uh, subscribe to the channel as well as uh, follow Twitch. 
definitely helps me out and you know makes me feel that I am uh, helping you guys out by seeing your positive feedback so hopefully the good energy gives us some good uh, mods here on our last like 50 alts come on come on come on come on I believe you guys better believe because I believe oh my god Why you do this? Tagger, why you do this? You want to be, you're meant for something more. <sighs> well. <laughs> it was a good run. It was a good run. It really was. Rip. All right, guys. Well, this is it for me. Uh, we've blown about an exalt doing this, so hopefully uh, you are a little bit uh, more familiar with the whole process, crafting start to finish, what to be looking out for, um, how to go ahead and uh, craft your items and control the mods, which mods to hit on, which mods to stay on, when to multi-mod a little bit, but I plan on doing a video specifically about that as well. Um, so if again, if you're interested, please like and subscribe. Uh, feel free to follow the Twitch at twitch.tv backslash dignity and um, catch us live all the time um, if you're interested in asking me any questions you can leave them in the comments below or catch me online um, I'd be happy to answer them and I'm happy to help you out so thanks again guys I hope you enjoyed it I'm out peace